What's up guys, my name is Hector Serrano. I'm a Division One athlete and today I'm gonna be taking you guys through a day in my life as a D1 athlete on break and what I do to get in shape for the season because we got spring coming up um, next week so I just wanna get in good shape for that. Also, I'm coming back from an injury right now that I got last week in my neck. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but I got some cupping done. Right there. So yeah, um, and then yesterday I went to the chiropractor so I'm feeling much, much better. Um, so today we're gonna do a little bit of fitness, um, some circuits, and then maybe some biking. So yeah, let's do some neck mobility and go get some breakfast. Also, if you guys wanna see what it's like to be a Division One athlete and get some behind the scenes um, that I don't post on YouTube or other platforms, um, make sure to follow my IG. We're almost at 5,000 followers. So yeah, I'd appreciate it. Let's go. So we're gonna have breakfast outside today. Um, I'm keeping it pretty light because I don't like to eat a lot in the mornings, but I'm having some beet juice um, And this has apple Lemon ginger and beet. It's a cold press juice from press juiceries But to be honest, I'm thinking about getting my own juicer just so I can make my own stuff um, And yeah, and then I have a spoonful of almond butter for some fats before practice and then some mango for some car quick carbs and sugar So yeah, just light and sugary um, and then I'll have my bigger breakfast after I go um, train because I just hate having a lot of food in my stomach while I work out. So yeah, let's just enjoy this beautiful day. I started drinking beet juice um, like a couple months ago before trainings and in the mornings. It gives me so much energy throughout the day. You know, I've been reading it's also pretty good for like your blood flow and like recovery and just all that good stuff so and it tastes pretty good in my opinion so yeah so i'm now gonna do some stretching um before i go out to run especially roll out my calves and like my feet and stuff because i've been getting a lot of shin splints um and my physio told me it's probably from either my calves are really tight or my feet are really tight and then also just because we've been switching surfaces a lot um, this past month, we were doing a lot of futsal and then like sprint work and then like playing on the turf. So like your body doesn't get used to the surface and like your shins start to get really sore. So yeah, I'm just gonna use some baseballs, um, my foam roller and the massage gun. The first exercise or stretch I'm gonna do. Um, so you're gonna go like this and then you place the baseballs in between your calf and your hammies and then you put you flex down your toes and then you just sit on it and this releases your um, like shin area and then it also releases your calves and a little bit of your hamstring so it just like loosens everything up also if if you feel it's too tight in your shins to do this stretch um, don't go as low as possible like support yourself with your hands a little bit so we'll do the same but flexing our toes inward Oh, I'm feeling this in my calves a lot. Okay, so the next one is pretty classic um, exercise. I would assume most people know about this, but it's really important to roll out your feet. So you can use anything like a baseball or a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, a golf ball, just any type of ball. Um, and you can like work yourself up to a harder ball um, if it's too uncomfortable. But all you gotta do is step on a ball like this. Step on the ball like this and just roll it under the arc on the outside and then you can also roll it on the, your like toe area right there and just release all the tightness in your feet um so after we foam roll um i like to go into my massage gun just a little bit into my calves not too much because i'm not trying to mess them up before i go train yeah. I like to do like 15 second holds. Instead of just moving it around, I feel like it works better for me. So I just hold it there. Then move it all, move it down, put it there. Move it back up. And I just work my way, my way around the calf. Loosening everything up a little bit.
So we're now about to hop in the car um, and head out to the track. Oh, gonna squeeze in. Ow, my head. Let's start the whip. And now we're on our way, guys. Vamos! Let's see how I'm gonna prop up this camera. Uh, I have a feeling this is about to fall. Um, Cause I lost my freaking tripod. I guess that'll have to do. So yeah, let's head out to the field now. So we made it to school. Um, they got a nice track here. That's why I used to go to high school. Uh, and yeah, hopefully there's no PE classes or anyone out there on the track. Hopefully it's free to use right now. So yeah, let's head down. It looks like there's no one out there on the track. So hopefully we're lucky. Let's go boys. So yeah, there's no one at the field or at the track. So we got it open to use, baby. Um, also, this is where we used to play our high school games. This is where we won the state championship. I hit the suey right over there, right in that corner. I hit the suey. Five minutes left in the first half. Darius Dukes one-on-one -on -one to Hector Serrano Martin. And there he is with the missile. 2-0 Whitney. You guys come for the goal. Stay for the celebration. Then in the second half, the pass back to the Watsonville goalie. But he can't pick it up. So Hector says, thank you very much. Maybe the easiest goal he'll ever score. 3-0 Whitney at that point. Um, and we won the finals here. 3-1, I think. So yeah, some pretty good memories here. But let's get some running in. Okay, so I actually have to be the most unlucky person in the whole world, bro. As soon as I start tying on my shoes, I just see like 90 kids walk out to the track. Like, what the hell? As soon as I put on my running shoes. So, um, there was like four PE classes out there. I guess they were all running the mile today or something. So, yeah, I got kicked off the track. So, I hate running out in the street and stuff. I don't know. I just hate, I don't like doing that stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is go do some hill sprints. It's not the same as some interval running, but I'll do some hint sprints. I mean, what the heck did I just say some hints? I'll do some hill sprints. Um, right now I'll go to a fat hill that I know. Last time I did this, I puked, um, but it was cause I wasn't fit. So hopefully I don't puke today. Um, and then later in the afternoon, after we see our special guest on today's video, um, we'll go do some interval biking. I'm just gonna get the heart rate up and burn some calories. So we have made it to the hill. So I'm now gonna set everything up. So we're gonna start right here, um, next to the sign, like towards the bottom of the hill. And then the hill goes up that way. So I'm gonna place the camera like 15 to 20 yards out. So I'm gonna start measuring it now and I'll just run past that. So I think I'm gonna go more yards so maybe like 25 so yeah right here is perfect so from right here to that yellow sign so I'm gonna place the camera down right here and then the plan is to run at least 10 to 12 um, and then on the way back after I spin up here I'll jog back down or walk so it'll be like a 30 second break counting the walk down and everything and then I'll just repeat that a couple times Hopefully I can get to 12. I'm th I think I can. Last time I got to 12, it was like a year ago, I remember I came here. I was getting ready for like preseason um, at my club. And I wasn't that fit and I did 12 and I had biked here. And after 12, I thought I was gonna pass out. So I had to call my mom to come pick me up because I couldn't get on my bike. So hopefully <laughs> that doesn't happen again. But um, yeah, I'm gonna start it now. So I'll leave the camera here and then I'll go back there and I'll show you guys these hill sprints.
I think that was too often. Jesus. My legs, bro. Oh my God. Thing is, I don't think you guys understand how steep this hill is. Like, it don't look that steep, but like, I don't know. Let me show you guys this angle. Let's see if it's better. I don't know. On camera, it just looks weird. So I just got home, um, back from the run, and now I'm about to make breakfast. I'm gonna make some steak and eggs, and then have some fruit. So yeah. First, I'm gonna start with the fruit bowl. I'm gonna put in some strawberries, some mango, and then a little bit of raspberries that I got left. So I just finished cooking, um, and this is the spread right now. So I got some hash brown, some avocado, three eggs, some steak, and I got some fruit, and then I got half of my green juice and half of my beet juice. So yeah, I'm about to eat this up, about to eat good, because I'm super hungry. I'm super hungry, and yeah, enjoy. So I ended up coming upstairs. I'm about to eat the fruit. We're watching the Betis game. Abuelo, quien quieres que gane? Who do you want to win? Betis. What, what do you think the score is going to be? Betis. How many? Two. <laughs> one. Two, one, Betis. Um, so hopefully they lose to Barca. And yeah, about to eat this fruit, about to drink my juice, and enjoy the game. So I just finished watching the Betis game with my grandpa. And now we got a special guest on the vlog. You want to introduce yourself? Bro. <laughs> introduce yourself. Bro, what do you mean? Where are we headed? My game, bro. Bro, you better not crash, bro. I don't know, bro. But yeah, my brother's behind the camera. We're about to go watch his JV game. Yeah, hopefully he scores a goal. Where are you guys playing today? Granite Bay. Bro, I can't, I can't see you. Turn the camera around. Granite Bay. Turn your camera around. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, chat, um, this is Project Mbappe right here in the car. We're about to make him the best footballer ever. He just needs to start taking the game more serious, you know what I mean? More serious, bro. I'll be saucing you up. That's the biggest cap ever. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a big brother versus little brother challenge. And I'll show you guys who's the real boss. That would not be fun, bro. Why? Could you get destroyed? No, you would, bro. That's the biggest cap ever. Put your seatbelt on too, bro. Since I'm not a good driver. I can't with the camera. Just got back home um, for my brother's game. Um, it was a pretty good game. My brother played good. Um, and they won, so I'm pretty sure they're now like um, first place in their conference for high school. Um, so now I'm in the home gym. Um, home gym of sorts. We got a bench, some weights, some other stuff, broken dumbbell. But yeah, I'm just gonna do some high intensity interval biking um, before I go out to eat with my parents. Um, we're gonna get some sushi. So I'm trying to, you know, burn some calories and get a little sweat in, get the heart pump in. Um, and yeah, hopefully get a little bit more fit. You know what I mean? I recently started getting into biking a lot. Um, especially after trainings. Um, like after a hard training session when I'm back at school, I'll do like 15 to 20 minutes later at night just to like flush out my legs and stuff. It also just helps me get my cardio up, and my fitness up. And it's great because it's, since it's low impact, like your joints and all your muscles, um, they don't really get that uh, sore. The next day and it's just overall good for your body um, without like um, putting as much impact on your tendons, muscles, joints, just everything in general. So yeah, I'm just gonna start with a three minute warm up. Just build up the speed. Um, and then we'll get into the circuit. Three, two, and one. Come on.
Now we rest for 30 seconds, low pace. Whew. Whew. Heart rate's gonna be bumping. Feeling it in the legs a little bit. Two, one, one. Ahí vamos. Dale, 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 dale. 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 Pa. 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 Ocho más uno. Pa. Nice little sweat in. Legs are feeling dead a little bit. Oh my God. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the biking session. Now let's go eat some sushi, you know what I mean? So I just got back from sushi um, and having dinner with my family. Um, and we're now gonna get into the Normatech talks or the Normatech Q and A's. Um, where I answer all of your guys' questions. Um, so for the next video, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below and I'll make sure to get to them. So yeah. And the first question is from Indominus DB and they're asking, hey, I wanna know when it, when it is a good time to go to sleep. Um, so I'd say for sleep, it's really important for soccer players um, cause it just helps with your overall recovery and just your performance and stuff. Cause if you're playing tired and you're going throughout your day tired, um, you're not gonna be as motivated and you're just not gonna have a lot of energy throughout the day. So I'd recommend sleeping at least I try to aim for at least seven hours, um, but anywhere from seven to nine is pretty good. They say 6.30 is like the minimum, but I always try to shoot for seven, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. The next question is from Omar Vina, and they're asking, hey bro, how many days do you recommend me to do physical work? Um, well, I think that depends whether you're in season or off season, um, because in season you really shouldn't be trying to get super strong, just more maintenance and injury prevention stuff, so you could do that maybe like three times a week. Um, just doing some light stuff, um, like single leg balance, um, some band work, stuff like that, even some weights, but just like trying to maintain what you already have and not trying to push yourself too hard in the gym since you're training a lot um, and playing a lot of games. And then off season, um, maybe like four to five times um, and you can go pretty heavy. The next question is from Moose and they're asking, would you recommend starting an NAIA? and working my way through a season and then transferring to better school. I mean, if you have the opportunity, why not? Um, there's a lot of ballers that come from NAI schools, JUCO schools, um, just any level really. Like we've seen, well, I don't know the Syracuse um, guy's name, but some player from Syracuse who was playing at NAI before that um, just transferred to the Premier League um, and now he's at loan in some team in the Netherlands. So yeah, I don't know why that wouldn't be um, something you're considering it sounds like a great opportunity just work hard there and then transfer to a better school like you said um, so I hope that answers your question and then the next and last question is from Eyuan Wiley and he's asking how did you pick the college that you are at now um, and honestly at first I didn't really know what school I wanted to go to so I was just looking all over and then when I went on the visit to the school for the first time I just fell in love with the campus um, and I really liked the coaches so yeah, I just felt like it was a place where I was wanted and I just really liked the environment, the school, small like small class sizes, um, it's a really good school for business. So it just had everything I was looking for in the school and from the, from the first visit I just knew it was somewhere I wanted to go. So yeah, hope that answers your guys' questions. If you have more, leave them down below. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and follow my IG to get some behind the scenes content. Peace guys.